starts right now. And we start with late breaking news this noon. A two alarm fire just south of downtown. This is a live look of what's left of that blaze with live cam. You can see the smoke billowing out across the San Antonio skyline. The fire started just a couple of hours ago. This is in the 1500 block of South Flores. Our Devin Clark is on scene. Devin, what is the latest? Well, Sarah, David, we're seeing a big improvement from what we saw just a few moments ago. We are on Flores and Savallos, where firefighters have been battling this blaze for about two hours now. Just take a look at what you see behind me. The fire had actually been knocked down, but they called it a stubborn fire for a reason, and that's because just a few moments ago we saw flames reigniting, which is why they are spraying this strong stream of water on the fire right now. Some 30 units called out to fight this. They say as soon as they got here, they had to go into defensive mode because the flames were so aggressive. Witnesses say that the fire began in a dumpster in an alley between two buildings. And while firefighters are working on the exact source of the fire, they do say they believe it started outside and then spread to an old triangle shaped building, which was a computer business called Sweb. Another nearby business also damaged. Firefighters say the fact that the triangle shaped building is so old and was so well built and sturdy, also having undergone numerous renovations, all factors that contributed to the fire burning so long and intensely. Some witnesses say they noticed the fire from miles away on the highway as they got closer. The scene grew even more frightening. Yeah, it's terrifying. I mean, we were pretty far away and the closer we got, the more smoke we saw. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. And we should mention that the silver lining in all of this is that no one was hurt. But of course, that firefighter uh, that told us about the situation said that the fire did start outside. So arson is investigating whether it's suspicious or not. We should also mention that this corridor between Flores, Savallos, Nogalitos, Keller, Clay, all in this south of downtown area, we can expect to see these streets closed off for quite some time. For now, reporting live, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Police are searching for the man who shot a woman working at a Subway restaurant on the south side this morning. This happening at Roosevelt Avenue in Loop 410 in the Espada North Shopping Center. Police say one problem they are facing, no one else was inside the sandwich chain when it happened. A woman working at a Subway restaurant on the south side was found with a gunshot wound behind the counter this morning. The victim taken a Bamsey in serious condition. The challenge for the San Antonio Police Department, she was the only one inside the subway on Roosevelt and 410 when she was shot. Because there were no witnesses at this time, we have our robbery detectives on scene. We have our homicide detectives on scene. Um, and as I mentioned, it's a very fluid situation. Investigators are trying to determine if this was a robbery or if the woman in her 40s knew the suspect. And that's not all they are investigating. Police are using video surveillance to figure out exactly what time this shooting happened and who this suspect possibly could be. We do have some good leads, but at this time we're unable to say exactly. You know, we know it's a male. 35 to 45 years of age is the range. Police say they are interviewing other people who were in the parking lot or working in nearby stores to see if they may have any other information to help find the shooter. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy's hunch has led to hard times for two suspects. They are facing criminal charges related to a stolen car and a chase in South Bear County. As Katrina Weber reports, the suspects caught one deputy's eye, then another caught them. The end of the road for two suspects on the run came at the end of Commercial Street near Loop 410. We saw one of them in handcuffs, although both are in trouble. It started when a canine deputy spotted them in this SUV near a gas station in South Bear County after 8 o'clock this morning. On a hunch, the deputy ran the license plate as it drove off and realized it was stolen. That deputy with his dog in tow was not able to chase them, but he did follow them, relaying their every move to his colleagues. The spokesman says when the road ran out, the two people inside the SUV decided to run for it. While those suspects ran, they didn't get far. A captain in the area happened to see them running on these railroad tracks and caught them. One of the suspects is underage, 16 years old. Deputies say the trouble for both of them doesn't end with the stolen SUV. Inside it, they say they found a small amount of marijuana, a handgun, and quite a bit of cash. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
New at noon, arson is investigating after flames sparked inside a shed that had propane tanks inside. Around 8.30 this morning, fire crews were called out to the 300 block of Vincent Street. That's on the southwest side. Crews say they found a structure behind a home on fire. The San Antonio Fire Department says the homeowners used the building as a laundry and gym room. They also kept propane tanks inside. Fire crews say those tanks were going off when they arrived at the scene. However, they were able to knock out the fire quickly. No one was home at the time. A man is seriously injured after he slammed his car into some barrels on the north side overnight. Police say the driver crashed into the barrels and the guardrail near Loop 410 in San Pedro just after 10 last night. The man was taken to the hospital because his head went halfway through his windshield. Police are investigating whether the driver had been drinking. Fire investigators trying to figure out what caused the fire on the east side. That fire started around 1230 this morning in the 100 block of Fredonia. That's near South Hackberry and Iowa streets. Fire crews say the fire started in the living room area and then spread, but firefighters were able to put it out quickly. Officials say a homeless person was squatting inside the house at the time, but he made it out safely. Well, today is your last chance to cast your ballot early ahead of Tuesday's primary election. So far, about 95,000 people have voted early in Bear County. According to the Bear County Elections website, more than 59,000 Democratic ballots and nearly 36,000 Republican ballots have been cast so far. If you don't have a chance to make it out to the polls today, you can, of course, still vote on Election Day, which is this upcoming Tuesday. You can find a list of polling places, a sample ballot, and a lot more information right now on KSAT.com. Just click on the vote. Just click on the Vote 2020 tab at the top. Sea Life Aquarium celebrating an educator with love for science. Joya Holden was named Science Teacher of the Year by the Aquarium. Ms. Holden is a fourth grade teacher at Keystone School. She's nominated by colleagues and parents for her incredible dedication to her students' education. I received the Sea Life Lifetime Pass for uh, Texas Teacher of the Year. There was, I think, one of, in, I'm one of five teachers in the state, um, and I get to go to Sea Life Aquarium anytime, apparently, with a Lifetime Pass, and I get to do a backstage tour behind the scenes and learn about the animals and just the everyday, I guess, function of the aquarium. Note. The statewide search garnered hundreds of nominations from across Texas that Ms. Holden is the only teacher in the San Antonio area selected. Well, this month is winding down, but there's still plenty to do around the Alamo City. Our Alicia Barrera takes a look in your weekend picks. February may be ending, but that definitely doesn't mean the fun has to stop. We have some fun weekend plans for you and your family. We can journey through Paris without even having to leave San Antonio. The Tobin Center will host the Tony Award winning Broadway show, An American in Paris. It's inspired by the 1950s Academy Award winning movie about a love affair between an American soldier and a mysterious French girl in post-war Paris. Your only chance to catch this play is this weekend on Sunday at 7 p.m. and tickets start at 4 and are you looking for some inspiration for your home? Well, look no further than the San Antonio Home and Garden Show happening this weekend. For all your indoor and outdoor needs, this home improvement trade show will showcase more than 300 exhibits in home remodeling, interior design, landscaping, and gardening. Plus, there's also a kids zone with face painting, a playground, and other activities. This is happening Friday through Saturday, and admission starts at $8. Love signs and space? Well, I have the perfect event for you that's literally out of this world. It's the Planets in the Park, hosted by the San Antonio River Authority. View the night sky through a telescope, watch a laser robot, show there's also a glow in the dark activity and you can meet a nasa astronaut we join the adventure at 6 p.m at helton san antonio river nature park in floresville and for more on these events and everything happening around town you can head over to ksat.com for the noon i'm alicia barrera ksat 12 news coming up in a few minutes of sports with larry ramirez cowboys owner jerry jones not ruling out the return of des bryant to his team Now to the 2020 race. The primary in South Carolina is just one day away. Former Vice President Joe Biden is considered to be the front runner in that state. If he does win South Carolina, would that change the outcome of the race nationally? 
Katrina Mitchell has more on tomorrow's primary and could the impact it could have moving forward. The former vice president finding momentum helped in part by black voters in South Carolina after stumbling in earlier contests and only managing a second place finish in Nevada last week. Polls showing Biden comfortably in the lead, and if he wins by a landslide, it could alter the trajectory heading into Super Tuesday. That's how we're going to get you, Joe. But a new ABC News Ipsos poll this morning shows Bernie Sanders is the national frontrunner. Let's win here in South Carolina. Let's win the Democratic nomination. Let's defeat Trump. But according to a New York Times report, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is facing deep alarm among party moderates who worry if Sanders wins the nomination, it will cost Democrats control of the House. Former Mayor Mike Bloomberg trying to increase his viability. The incompetence in the White House is endangering lives and hurting our economy. And casting doubt on Sanders' health. The senator from Vermont had a heart attack last year and has not released all his health records. Bloomberg taking a swipe, releasing a letter from his doctor with results of a heart stress test, calling on Sanders to do the same. The other candidates all pushing ahead with no one showing any signs of backing down before Super Tuesday. Elizabeth Warren saying she'll campaign till the convention. Bernie Sanders maintaining he's the most electable against President Trump. Meanwhile, President Trump will be at a rally in South Carolina later today. He wants to make sure Democrats don't go into tomorrow's primary without any pushback. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. And once again, we want to get you back to that fire just south of downtown. This is a live shot right there at Flores, Nogalitos, and Savallo Street. This is actually in the 1500 block of South Flores. That's where the, the building is located, and that's where that fire took place. You can see firefighters have got that situation under control. The flames out at the Swebb Development Building. Several surrounding buildings were evacuated due to the intense smoke. The flames did spread to two buildings, and like we said, those flames are out just kind of in the mop-up stages right now. Of course, the area around 1500 South Flores is still shut down, so you will want to avoid that area because that fire is still under investigation. And you can see there's still a little bit of smoke there, so you know those fires are, or those firefighters are watching those hot spots. So uh, you just find a different, different route this afternoon. And and I'm sure if you're working in the downtown area or in the downtown area, you saw, I, I, we pulled into our parking lot right then, we saw that mm -hmm. huge black smoke and it was a little scary, intimidating, but the winds uh, didn't really, they weren't too bad no, today. No, and, and thankfully this didn't happen a couple days ago. We had those really strong winds. Uh, the winds were fairly calm this afternoon. We'll see some wind, but it, it won't be terribly strong. Temperatures, though, very nice. And the weekend is looking great. So if you have plans this weekend, all is good. Of course, tomorrow is leap day. We are still in February tomorrow. 74 degrees on your Saturday. Beautiful, mostly sunny. Sunday will get a little bit more moisture, some morning clouds. It'll be breezy, 78. So, again, a good weekend ahead of us. Uh, lows this morning in the 20s in a lot of spots. 26 in Kerrville, 27 Hondo, 29 Uvalde. So below freezing there. San Antonio did not drop down to freezing. We were at 37, cold, but not as cold as it was uh, last morning. And uh, we'll see some warmer mornings ahead. Take a look at the sunrise, though. This is our time lapse. Boy, that's gorgeous, too. It was really nice to start. 66 now. Dew point is at 32. West southwesterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Now is keeping our humidity very low at 28%. As far as cloud cover goes, yeah, there are a few thin high clouds. Not a problem, though, and they're few and far between at that. Uh, temperatures in the 60s in most spots. We are... Uh, looking at 71 there in Contula, 68 Creso Springs, 64 in Uvalde, 64 right now in Fredericksburg. A little closer look here around San Antonio. You're at 63 Bernie, 61 Holota, 64 right now in Floresville, and 65 for our friends out there in Seguin. As far as dew points go, well, the dew points are low today. The air is dry. Uh, it'll be uh, somewhat dry on Saturday. On Sunday, we'll start to see these numbers come back up, and of course, uh, this graphic isn't showing it correctly, but these uh, should be popping up. Uh, it's Monday and Tuesday where we're going to get quite a bit more humidity, and, and that may eventually lead to some showers and storms. Sunday, you'll start to feel it. Monday and Tuesday are probably our most humid days in the seven-day forecast. As we look across the state, there's not much going on here. We've got some of those high clouds coming in out of the west, but there is no rain associated with this. 
at least not yet. And there is uh, some lake effect snow going on across uh, the Great Lakes and places like New York getting quite a bit of snow as the uh, storm system is exiting uh, the country and moving east. Our next storm system is up here across the Pacific Northwest. It's still way up there. We have a lot of time to watch this one, but it is going to dive down the west coast slowly but surely, and I think it'll probably be here by Tuesday. So we'll start to get that increase in moisture Sunday, and then uh, with that energy, the lift that we need, we should get some showers and storms going. I'd say probably Tuesday. This may linger over into Wednesday, depending on what model you're looking at, but I think Tuesday is probably our best chance for rain if we're going to get any. Today, 71 degrees, the high temperature, mostly sunny, 68 at 6 o'clock. You got plans to go out tonight. Temperatures will fall off fairly quickly, 50 by midnight, and winds will be generally pretty light. 74 Saturday, 78 Sunday, as we mentioned, 77 on Monday with more clouds. Chance of rain Tuesday, 40%. We'll get a frontal boundary through here that'll cool us off some on Wednesday, 68, 20% chance of rain, 72 on Thursday. And if you're interested on learning more behind Leap Day, Leap Year, always an interesting topic of conversation. Sarah Spivey has a great explainer coming up tonight on the News at 9. Every four years. That's right. You totally messed up Leslie with that thing today, boy. Well, She's it's not right. every four years. It's almost Wait. every four, four years. years. Oh. See? Oh. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Spurs might need another couple of days to rest and get ready for for a run at the end of the season, huh? And I'll tell you what, though. Their schedule really sets them up to make a late run to grab okay. the eighth and final playoff okay. spot. Coming up, they have 25 games to go in the regular season, and their schedule is one of the easiest in the NBA. Plus, Lonnie Walker, boy, he helped hand out some laptops yesterday, making some kids smile. Coming up. I have not talked to Des directly. I've been thinking about it a lot in the shower. Well, Jerry Jones certainly has a way with words, doesn't he, in big board sports. With 25 games left in the regular season, the Spurs winner to grab a playoff spot is closing. They are 11th in the Western Conference at 24 and 33, three and a half games out of eighth place. They've lost two straight and seven of their last ten. According to tankathon.com, the Spurs' remaining strength of schedule is .474, which is the sixth easiest in the NBA and third easiest in the West, while Memphis, the team they're chasing for eighth place, has the toughest remaining schedule in the NBA at .548. The Spurs still have a chance, and they know what they have to do. We all know the situation. Um, we just, individually, we all got to be men and, and grow up and you know, be the best we can be. Just doing all the little things at this point to, to make us come close together. So, um, you know, we know what the, what the time frame is and we know what we got to do. We just got to, you know, turn that mode over. Spurs have a good shot to get back into the win column Saturday night, 730 when they host the Orlando Magic. Spurs guard Lonnie Walker IV has been part of his day yesterday making kids smile. He made a surprise delivery of 40 laptops courtesy of Khan's home plus Khan Cares at Ed White Middle School. With the help of the Coyote and the Spurs hype squad, Lonnie joined 40 participating students from STEM related activities who also received a pair of Spurs tickets to an upcoming game. With the ability to code and, and do these type of things, I feel like you need that to be in that situation of having great technology like a, a better laptop or, you know, something that's more of an upgrade. And for them to have that and access it and be able to do more things and see how bigger and better the things can be, uh, you know, I'm excited. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones is not ruling out a possible return of wide receiver Des Bryant, which became a possibility when the Cowboys parted ways with Jason Garrett, who Des blamed for his demise. Des last played in the NFL in 2017, then the boys cut him. He signed with the Saints in 2018, only to blow out his Achilles tendon before the season started. Since that time, he has come back strong and has expressed a desire to return to play for Dallas and new head coach Mike McCarthy. Jerry Jones is open to Dez putting the star back on, making his comments in an hour-long session aboard his Cowboys bus at the NFL Combine in Indianapolis. I'm not dismissing it. I mean, I'm, I don't want to sound like it should be dismissed by saying that. Right. I'm thinking about it. Well, because he's an outstanding player, and uh, we know Dez better than anybody. I remember a lot of good things, and uh, uh, 
far overshadows the negatives for me. So will we see Dez doing this uh, again with <laughs> the Cowboys? I just, just like that just it's like it. Jerry's human too. Like he, he's just like us. Yeah. He thinks in the shower. He's right, right. The shower is a great place to think. I guess. You don't think oh, in the shower? That's where I do. The shower. Okay, well, I, I do my best. Keep that to yourself, shower. David. Some hits in the shower. <laughs> Hey, Lonnie Walker, it's always good, fun to see these guys go back to school because Lonnie Walker is not exactly that far removed from school. So he can relate to those and, kids. And education is obviously very important to him because that's what his father stressed yep. to him. That's great stuff. Yep. All right, Larry. Coming up in the next half hour, we're still tracking that fire investigation on South Florida. Our Devin Clark is on the scene bringing us the latest. That's after the break. Once again, developing on the south side, a two alarm fire. That fire is now out, but crews battled those flames for a couple of hours early this morning. That massive fire sending huge plumes of smoke into the air. That fire started in the 1500 block of South Flores. That's where our Devin Clark is now. He's following that story for us. Devin. Well, Sarah and David, as you mentioned, good news. The fire has been knocked out, but firefighters remain on the scene spraying water on that building. They want to make sure that no hot spots reignite like we did see at the top of the hour. We are on Nogalitos and Savallos where this call came in around 10 o'clock this morning. It took some 30 units and around 100 firefighters to battle what they called a stubborn fire. They say as soon as they got here, they have to go into defensive mode because the flames are so aggressive. Now, witnesses tell us that the fire began in a dumpster in an alley between two buildings. And while firefighters are working on the exact source of the fire, they did say that they believe it started outside and then spread to that old triangle shaped building, which was a computer business called Sweb. A ne another nearby business also damaged. Firefighters say that the old construction materials in the building is what made this such a hard fire to fight. It contributed to the burning so long and intensely. I mean, we were probably about three or four miles north of downtown when we started seeing the smoke and we were wondering what was going on. And then as we exited uh, onto Alamo Street, that's when we really saw the, the fire trucks and the hoses going. And that building you're looking at, the main building where the fire was contained, firefighters say that building may be demolished. No reports of injuries. And as far as what caused the fire, arson is looking into it. But we do want to mention that this corridor, Savallos and Flores, south of this area, just a few blocks. We expect this to be closed off for a few more hours as firefighters continue doing what they do. Reporting live south of downtown, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Now to the latest in the coronavirus emergency. Overnight, more new cases were reported. The ripple effects being felt through the U.S. economy. ABC's Alex Perche is in Washington with more. Stocks falling again this morning. Wall Street on edge following yesterday's largest single day drop in history. The Dow plunging more than 3,200 points in just four days after hitting record highs just last week. Stocks are now down nearly 11 percent. I just don't think this short term stock market plunge is going to have any Nobody long term effect. In California, authorities are scouring this community to find out if COVID-19 could have spread after a Solano County woman showed up to a local hospital with flu like symptoms. She was placed onto a ventilator, but was not tested for the virus until four days later. Every single delay in testing means potentially the virus could go to hundreds or thousands of more people. That woman now in quarantine at UC Davis Medical Center. This as new whistleblower complaints reported by the New York Times and the Washington Post about federal employees who interacted with quarantine Americans at two Air Force bases. The accusation, they allegedly worked without proper training or protective gear. The Secretary of Health and Human Services responding. They should never have been without appropriate PPE. What's PPE? That's a uh, personal protective equipment. Vice President Pence now looking to control what information gets out to the public. According to senior White House sources, all statements about novel coronavirus from the CDC or the Health Department must now be vetted through his office. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. A federal judge in Washington state blocked the Trump administration from diverting funds from a project there to fund the border wall construction. A construction project at Naval Submarine Base Bangor is one of more than 100 the administration wants to take money away from. The base is home to submarines that carry nuclear warheads. The judge said that the project is much too important to risk. 
President Trump's administration wanted to take nearly $90 million from the construction project. It's part of the president's emergency declaration, which allows his administration to dip into Pentagon funds to help build the wall. A winter storm continues to slam parts of the country. The lake effect snow machine was in high gear this morning with some of the heaviest bands pouring off Lake Erie and Lake Ontario into western New York. As ABC's Stephanie Ramos reports, the nasty weather is expected to continue. Here in Hamburg, New York, wind gusts of about 56 miles per hour are pushing waves on Lake Erie as high as 10 feet, splashing onto the shoreline freezing everything on contact. Check out those signs there behind me, the fencing, the rocks, all of it completely iced. And that intense wind and snow are expected to continue across western New York today. Overnight, this latest winter storm slamming the northeast, driving what could be the biggest lake effect snow event of the season. Huge waves from the Great Lakes crashing into the shore upstate New York, bearing the brunt of high winds and blizzard conditions. And this tractor trailer dangling on an overpass after a multi-vehicle crash closed a portion of I-86. New York State Police citing weather as a factor for the collision. And this semi sliding off the road into a ditch on I-81 as multiple counties issue travel advisories. Now here across this area in western New York, lake effect snow warnings are in place until later on this afternoon. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Hamburg, New York. Schools and businesses in Houston are closed today after a massive water main break. A water main that provides water to nearly half of Houston residents broke yesterday. It happened when a city contractor was doing exploratory work. The water quickly submerged roads and even flooded a freeway nearly two miles away. The fire department had to evacuate homes and a few people had to climb off the tops of their vehicles and be rescued. It was the worst day of my life. I'm trying to get home. It's the worst day of my life. Got Popped on top of the roof and was stranded until they came and rescued us. Uh, the water has since receded, but city crews still have a lot of work ahead of them. Luckily, no one was hurt. Houston still under a boil water. The city is working with the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to approve a water sampling plan that will determine when the boil order is no longer needed. Take a look outside at live cam. Oh, it is a clear day and it looks like it is warming up out there, Justin. Yeah, it's it's uh, beautiful right now. I'm guessing there's going to be a few people that are going to cut out early from work just uh, leave early and enjoy the afternoon and evening. Uh, right now, the aquifer is down two tenths of a foot to 673 even. Still doing OK, though, in that regard. And in the Palm Count, Bold Nash in the low category, so no big problems there either. Let's take a look at temperatures and I'll show you what's going on out there right now. Again, very comfortable. 66 at the airport, 68 Bolverde, 62 Canyon Lake, 67 in New Braunfels. Just an ideal day, really. And we're going to get some more of this type of weather as we go into the weekend. Forecast high temperature today, 71 here in San Antonio. In fact, most of us will be in the 70s, even some upper 70s down to our south and west. And so the forecast for today, I'd say by 2 o'clock, 69 degrees, 71 by 4 o'clock, mostly sunny. And then we'll drop into the 60s by 8 o'clock and eventually into the 50s by tomorrow morning. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Still to come, Draymond Green got tossed last night. No surprise. He got a reaction from LeBron James. Look at Bron trying to hide while he's laughing at him. <laughs> Larry Mears has more on that coming up. The Dow taking another hit today after it recorded its worst single day loss in history yesterday. You just saw it 700 points down. However, DoorDash still wants to jump in. The food delivery company is preparing to go public. That's despite fierce competition in the food delivery market. DoorDash announced yesterday it had submitted confidential paperwork with the SEC to go public. Yesterday, the Dow plummeted 1,100 points, followed up by that 700 today so far.
Well, this year, the month of February is just a little bit longer. You can celebrate it this weekend by getting free stuff on Leap Day. Ashley Home Store and Motel 6 are offering special discounts. And Krispy Kreme is sending donuts to hospitals and parents of leap year babies within 10 miles of participating shops. All health professionals and parents have to do is tag Krispy Kreme with the hashtag Krispy Kreme Special Delivery. Here are some other deals for Leap Day babies. They can get a free party fun day, pre, a free party fun Sunday at main event. And the San Antonio Zoo is offering free admission. Take a look at all those deals right now on KSET.com and enjoy it because it only comes around once every four years. And if you are a Selena fan, here's something to get excited about. Tomorrow, Stripes honoring the Tejano music legend with two limited edition collectible cups. You can buy the cup starting at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Stripes says they worked on the design with Selena's sister, Suzette Quintanilla. This will be the fourth year Stripes stores have partnered with the Quintanilla family. You can get more information on the cups right now on our website. Just go to KSAT.com. Might need some ice in that cup. A little cool drink mm -hmm. next few days, huh? Yeah, we're starting to warm up. Yeah. We're seeing things uh, jump into the 70s here. We will uh, eventually this afternoon and certainly over the weekend. So some warmer readings. This should say 66. That's our current temperature. The low this morning, 37. So that was a little bit below average, but we'll be right about average this afternoon. Records are 94 and 24, so we can get that warm. That 94 reading set back in 1940. Got some rain chances next week, too. They're looking a little bit better. We'll talk about it when we come back. Disney Plus is reviving the animated series The Proud Family. I remember that show. The original show aired on Disney Channel from 2001 to 2005. The revival called The Proud Family Louder and Prouder is in production now and everyone is coming back. That includes the original voice cast as well as a show creator and main producers. The previous seasons of The Proud Family are already available on the streaming service. And Jordan Peele's horror empire continues to grow. Now the first trailer for the upcoming Candyman reboot is out. The film produced by Peel and directed by Nia DaCosta has been described as a spiritual sequel to the 1992 original. You can catch Candyman in theaters June 12th. Mm -mm. Mm. I won't be catching that. You don't like scary movies? No. Why would you torture yourself? I, I like a lot of people out there. Love I like Jordan Peele, but that one looks kind of... You're probably the worst good. to watch a scary movie because you're like... It's right behind you. That's not happening. Justin I is mean, Mr. Reality. I've never met a more realistic. <laughs> but I do like horror movies. I do. But you don't believe in ghosts. So that's, no. that doesn't, doesn't believe that doesn't anything. Mix. But you believe in warmer <laughs> temperatures. I do believe in that. That I could get know. behind. And uh, we're going to get some of those uh, today. And last night we had clear skies. And you, know, you could see the moon and Venus. It was uh, very beautiful out there. David sent this picture in of that. Uh, we appreciate the pictures. As always, you can go to our KSAT weather app and you can submit your uh, KSAT Connect pictures there. So send them in. We like to see them. We're winding down February here, so let's take a look at where we are rain-wise. 1.07 inches for the month. That's about, uh, well, a little over half an inch below average. And since January 1st, we're at 2.94, about half an inch below average for the year. So we still could use some more rain. We've, we're doing okay. We've had some bouts here and there, but still not enough. And we've got some more coming on Tuesday. I hope we'll at least get a little bit out of it. 66 degrees right now. A few clouds moving across the sky. 32 the dew point. West southwesterly winds at 8. Humidity is at 28%, so very low. Temperatures already in the 70s there around Kerrville and Comfort. Uh, 62 Canyon Lake, 67 in New Braunfels. We're in the mid-60s here around town. And as you zoom out, some 70s on the map from Carrizo Springs to Catula over towards Eville as well. What a great afternoon. It really is nice out there. Dew points are in the low end, so that's why we're still seeing some pretty big swings in the temperature. But these numbers will steadily go up. And I think as we get into Saturday, eh, they're a little bit higher. We're still doing uh, okay because we're still in the dry category here. But as we get into Sunday, that's when you start to feel the humidity a little bit more. These dew points jump up into the 50s. It's more trending towards muggy. And I think by Sunday afternoon, you really will start to feel it. The question is, will that translate to some showers and storms? And if that's going to happen, probably won't happen until Tuesday and the Wednesday of next week. In the meantime, we're going to get some of these high clouds moving through. We can see them very nicely here on water vapor. And this will be off and on the next couple days. So the skies won't be perfectly sunny, 
but sunny enough. We're still, again, looking at a pretty great weekend. Here's our next system, which is up here west of Seattle. It's going to take some time as it works down the west coast. And as it does, it'll bring rain there. High pressure will shift east, and we'll get some deeper moisture in here Sunday, as we talked about. Uh, but it'll, it'll be a while before this storm system gets close enough to give us that chance of storms, and I think that's probably Tuesday afternoon. Right now, we have the rain chance set at about a 40% shot. And then that this could even linger into Wednesday. Some of the models are hinting at that, but probably our best chance for rain will be on Tuesday. And we could see some thunderstorms out of this, so we'll keep you posted. 71 degrees. The high temperature today, 68, 6 o'clock. By midnight, though, we drop off pretty sharply, 50. And uh, we're expecting temperatures to get down into the low 40s tonight. 74 tomorrow, 78 Sunday with some morning clouds, afternoon sun, more clouds on Monday, and then a 40% chance of rain as it stands right now. Tuesday, maybe another slight chance on Wednesday as well. I was going to wash my car this weekend, and then you just said, <laughs> well, I mean, just, you can't win. Uh, just go for it. Just go ahead and wash it. <laughs> it's really know. dirty. Yeah, it's, go for it. Ugh. If you're from San Antonio, I don't think it matters what sport you really like. If you're just a general sports fan, mm -hmm. you've got to love the story about this young man from Central Catholic. Huh? Yeah, Jose Gallegos, 18 years old, goes to Central Catholic High School. He's a four-time state champion with the Buttons, and now he is officially a pro member of SAFC. Such a great story. Plus, in boys high school basketball, Pleasanton is having a great season and they want it to continue. Coming up. After getting dumped by the Dallas Mavericks Wednesday night, the Spurs look to get back on track Saturday night at home with the sub 500 Orlando Magic. According to playoffstatus.com, the Spurs currently have an 11% chance to grab the eighth and final playoff spot in the West and less than a 1% shot to grab one of the top seven spots. With 25 games left in the regular season, PlayoffStatus.com says the Spurs have an 88% chance of missing the postseason. Lakers on the road versus the Warriors last night. No LeBron James for L.A. Draymond Green was back for Golden State after missing two games. Second quarter, Dwight Howard battling for position in the post with Green and they both fall down after contact. Green gets called for a personal foul on the play. He's not happy, so Green lets Tyler Ford, the ref, know what he thinks of the call, and Ford gives Green a technical. Moments later, Howard tries to screen Green for Kyle Kuzma, and Green falls down from the contact. Green appears to trip Howard as he hits the floor, and Green gets called for the foul. That's when he absolutely loses it. He starts screaming at the refs in frustration and is given a second technical foul and is ejected. The technicals came 11 seconds apart. LeBron, well, he starts laughing at Green as someone who's been kicked by Draymond. He had the chuckle. Lakers roll the Warriors 116 to 86. San Antonio FC made a very cool move yesterday, signing Central Catholic star Jose Gallegos to a multi-year deal. The 18-year-old helped lead the Central Catholic Buttons to their fourth straight state soccer title and has played for SAFC in exhibition games this season. Gallegos has been a member of SAFC since 2019 on a United Soccer League Academy player agreement. Now his first pro contract comes with the Alamo City Club. It's a special moment for me. It's uh, I've said it before. It's it's every kid's dream, and, and I'm very blessed to be in in, in this position. Um, my family's very happy, especially to sign a contract here at home in front of my family, my friends, everyone. So I'm very uh, happy. San Antonio FC has one final exhibition match today at 1 p.m. at Toyota Field against RGV FC. And then they kick off their regular season at home against Real Monarchs on March 7th. Pleasanton boys basketball team is back in the area finals for the third time in the last four years. After finishing with a perfect 12-0 record in District 30, 4A, and 31-3 overall, the Eagles open the playoffs with a dominant 152 victory versus Pearsall. And now they prepare to face Sinton, who knocked them out of last year's playoffs in the regional quarters. The biggest thing the Eagles have going for them, team chemistry. All the seniors have played together for three or four years and uh, we just have that chemistry together and we work together all the time and uh, we have chemistry with the whole team. We're all just together. Uh, this is a brotherhood. When we're out here, we push each other, work hard, and when we're not, we're always together. This is, this our team is our everything. Pleasanton takes on Sinton tonight at six in Cuero. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm.
Alabama wide receiver Henry Ruggs III had a wow moment at the NFL Combine being held in Indianapolis, running a 4.2740 elite speed for sure, but not fast enough to break the mark set by John Ross, who put down a 4.22 in 2017, which is considered the record in the Combine's electronic timing format that began in 1999. Totally makes that's, me feel a lot slower. That's flying right um, there. Super <laughs> slow. How about Jose? How many times do you think a guy has come up to him in class and go, hey, can I get a loan? Yeah, <laughs> right. You think he's heard that right. already. Can I get an autograph? Yeah. So I was asking gonna be a star. Larry, so if he, the season starts in March, we can go see him play. Yeah, he'll That's be awesome. there. Yep, he'll be playing. All right. Congratulations, him. That is a great story. All right. Talk about great stories. They always have some great stories to tell down there at SA Live, don't they? Yep. Oh, yes, we do. And it is a very colorful Friday on today's show. Because you know what tomorrow is? Leap day! Yes! <laughs> we didn't even practice that. No, but that's what we are celebrating today in honor of all those leapers out there who have birthdays every four years. Yeah, once every four years. So why not go big with a four-tiered cake? Yes, Allie Olgin, home baker and owner of Cakes by Tori wow. Elizabeth, is here. Oh, my it's goodness. Beautiful. Not one, not two, not three, but four tiers on and that cake. You make every little thing that goes on there, right? Including all of the fondant... Accessories. I do. Accents. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, so in order to make these fondant polka dots, I normally use circle cutters. Right. So I just roll out the fondant and then cut them out and punch them. If you don't have fondant cutters, you can always use piping tips. Okay. They come in different sizes. You can use the front or the back. and it She's going to teach us that, and we're going to try our hand at it. Speaking of leapers, how about little bunnies that leap and hop? And Ashley Duncan from Janda Exotics is here. Who is that little furball? This is Wally, and he's an English Angora bunny, and he sure does hop. Boy, <laughs> we've got some other really cute ones for you coming up. And what do you wish only happened once every four years? Share your comments on social media and tag us at SA Live KSAT. Don't forget, Sunday is Peanut Butter Lover's Day. Ooh, and this is from PBJ and Tay. All these great sandwiches they brought for us. Cream that cheese, more coming bacon, up. and grape. Yes, please.